All right, so what else? Look, sidebars. We also have this, I've talked about toolbars right here, which is solution wide. Well, we have a sidebar companion to that that's very similar in that you can do some workflow screens over here in a sidebar that are completely generic to the solution itself. So you can like put to-do items, and we use this a lot for um, workflow activities that might span a number of different forms over here. Sidebars, they're great. Um, easy filters. I may have seen some of this down here. This is a filter button, and you can set up predefined filters. Um, the examples here, there's probably, this is, takes a lot of coding to do this kind of thing. Uh, this is all configurable. I'll show these screens in a bit. Let's see how many I've got here going. So, you know, you can set those up for, for your users and you can change them right on the fly. Power replace, okay, here's a big one. And this one you don't turn on. This is very good for uh, when you have access and control on. But if you'd like to replace data for a set of records, you can go ahead and search for, um, say, Savoy. And I need to select a field here. Okay, so let's do that. And say for all of Savoy, I want to add something to this description field. The power replace is, well, I've only selected a few things. Let's go ahead and active status, and let's go ahead and do that. So I just set... <coughs> Not sure uh, if that's actually on that form, so the setup is a little bit wacky on that one. But uh, the whole point of that is to be able to to do data replacing through a number of records on the same column, and you don't want anybody doing that. So access and control, really good. Entry screen setup, port manager, value list manager, I18 manager, tooltip manager, user feedback. So we have all of these managers, and again, here's where I'm going to start going over here, is that you can configure um, all of these resources and managers. We have nice little user interface screens for them, and um, a number of value lists. You can search. You can have tons of value lists. And so you can actually change the value list then on the fly, add another value to your shipping, for example, um, bike messenger. And this will now be available as a choice. Again, the setup screens over here, you can lock out from your general user with access and control. Um, the biggest one is this navigation engine, which I'll, I'll come back to that configured all of those uh, features, core features. And I'll do that in a third part here. There are some developer tools. The code library spe specifically is very, very powerful. And um, the code library is, we have a number of modules, but these, these resources right here, a bunch of globals um, to do functions, color method, you know, these kinds of things that we thought were valuable and we reuse. And some of them take a, quite a bit of um, effort to code. I think duplicate um, a record that might have a whole bunch of related data, for example, we have a, a duplicate uh, function in here that goes ahead and just uh, does that for you, just pass in all the relations that you need. Another very specific one to um, application frameworks, if you're metadata driven, what if you have some code here that you want to jump to another form with? Well, that precludes, if you're doing it with a method, you, you need to be able to basically click to that customer. Um, so say this contact right here, I'll, that is actually going to that contact right here. And I did that with a method. Well, we call those triggers. And so anything that's metadata driven, you have these triggers to actually um, take care of anything that you that would be normally be done by a user action. So the triggers are very, uh, you need to have a good set of triggers developed when you have your own frameworks for application development. And those have been developed over years, as Data Sutra has, and uh, I've got a, quite a few cool things. Um, we also have templates, sample solutions, all this kind of stuff. There, there is reports. Let me just get over here. Developer tools. We have some reports on your navigation, all kinds of things. Um, there also is this inline feedback. So somebody they they can go over here and say, "Hey, I want to go." I would show it here, but there is when you're outside. Let's go ahead and just demo that. This is one of the one of the features. Hey, I have a bug on here, um, so I'm gonna say feedback, and um, I don't like this form. And then you know, 
know, this kind of thing. This is the usual um, feedback that you might get. Very typical. So developer tools, you know, feedback over here. And we, all, we go ahead and take a snapshot of the form. We tell you where it's at, who, who logged it in, and dates and all that kind of stuff. And you do response, you can close things down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, you know, just some simple things like that that uh, are those kinds of touches that the users like a lot. Access and control, this is just, I'm going to go ahead and show you that before hitting the third um, section here where I implement things. But the access and control, very powerful. Again, this is the kind of thing you don't have to have on or off, and uh, it'll automatically be off if you haven't paid for it. But it is groups and users. It's also SAS ready. Uh, there's work, it's just, I could go for an hour on this one, but just sort of click around. Um, we have a bank as a customer, so we have very, um, high-level password controls that would actually fit the rules of the bank if you turn them all on. Um, again, it's users and groups. A group defines all the functionality that that users in that group can um, can do. We, basically, there's three levels going on: is what kind of functionality uh, and also. Uh, what records can you access? And that's the SAS part. Uh, all kinds of, we can also log everything for that group. Um, so if you're clicking around, basically we can log all that for you. Set what your landing form is, etc., etc. And here's all the users. Again, the users, passwords, etc., etc. See what the um, access they've been doing and what your specific user preferences are as well. Kind of a neat thing there. Um, come back to workflow, but the SAS part here is that you'll have organizations and people in those organizations. And um, you set up your database filters based on that organization. You only see the records for the organization that you come in as. And you also get value lists. You can override any specific value lists um, that are set up in the generic value lists. And, um, go ahead and say hey for this for lens all I want is we don't want all of these we don't want bike messenger I'm gonna go ahead and say well when you log in they're not gonna get bike messenger so you can override um, some of those kinds of things lastly workflow control is very very powerful and what you can do is you can register uh, an action that you can code against and check for if the user has access to this registered action. So that's going to be over in, in groups. And you'll notice this group can do all of those actions. And this group can't, the user. So, for example, you can have admin people who can delete records, but uh, just your general users can't. So, very, very well thought out um, access and control. You know, tons of coding there, obviously. So, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the third part. And that is. We're going to be dealing a lot in this navigation setup. This is our configuration pane for this. And we're going to create a module and a, couple, and a screen of a new application. And then we're going to go ahead and configure it into our into Data Sutra, and we'll be done. So, in general, you're going to want your own workflow module. And we have a ton of modules. Notice that we have some workflow modules that are for the CMS and those kinds of things. And naming conventions are, are, are fairly important, but in this case, I don't worry about it too, too much. And we'll just come up here and let's go ahead and do a new solution. Let's go ahead and make this a module. We don't want to start up with this. And I have a smart client open. Let's go ahead and close that down for a second. Now we have this data connect um, connector um, solution right here and this is where you're going to include your solution to make everything work so you'll see over here in properties and uh, just take this on a and add this to the connector when you do that okay, I thought we were logged out I think we are Let's doom, 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 doom. Okay, Servoy is now struggling. There we go. It's all rebuilt it all up. So let's go ahead and activate our solution. Actually, we can go ahead and activate Data Sutra at this point. I may just restart in a second. Actually, just kick this open. While that's starting up, let's go over the modules here, and we have demo solution. 
our demo solution has no forms in it. So let's obviously the first thing we do. And um, yeah, why not? Companies, boom, boom, uh, the form name is, again, we have all kinds of naming conventions for this, uh, for forms and all kinds of names, but uh, I'm just gonna make this really quick. All right, this is our really, really fantastic form. So there we have it. Now, we're going to go ahead and let's do, let's do one thing. Let's use our style on everything. It sh to do that, you would include within Demo Solution, we need to bring in some resources and just bring in this one module. And now everything. This is working now. Okay. Go ahead and quit one more time. Style name, boo to do, style class. We now have style names. Let's go ahead and just put data sutra in here. And now when we open this up, looks a lot different. And all of these are now going to be marked up with the style sheet. All right, how do we get this into? Next step is to go ahead and let's go ahead and configure this. Let's set up a new navigation set. This is our demo. We have one item here, this is going to be company. And the I've got to check, this is all it takes to actually include this. And when I exit now, uh, since I have access and control on, I don't see it up here. This is a good example of access and control. Let's go ahead and put that in for the group. So what navigation sets am I allowed to see? And we have a Navigation, I'm gonna have to restart to get this to reconfigure because I just created it. It would help maybe if I X, now let's go ahead and log out. I have to do this once or twice. Okay, that was the new navigation set that we um, Created and now with my login, I'm allowed to see it. I'm gonna have to log in one more time. Again, once you have everything set up. Okay, there we have it. Now notice you can navigate here, but we also have our record navigator up here. And notice that our ne record navigator automatically works. Let's uh, we don't have any search parameters up here yet, so let's go ahead and do that. It's one of the easier things to do. So here's our find tab. Let's go ahead and make sure that we're on the correct thing. And, um, yeah, yeah, I know, a little bit of a, let's go ahead. Okay. All right, you can do a, a couple things like that. We're, we've taken out the alt text. I just have it in mind at the moment. Because uh, specific to... All right, so company, it's your boy. Now notice that there is one record here. We don't have a list over here set up yet. And um, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and set a list up over here. Here's where we set up a list. If I don't have that checked, I can fill in the list area here with, again, a form from your workflow module. But we're gonna go ahead and, and do it this way. When you turn that on, you have a list over here, and let's go ahead.